The last year and a half has been a challenging one to say the least. A global pandemic, the resurgence of the Black Lives Matter movement, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, football almost coming home, but not quite, and in the process, revealing a racist underbelly of the society that we live in. Whoa. <laughs> that was a whole lot, right? <laughs> Core Educational Trust created Core Lot, the acronym Leaders of Tomorrow, in response to the social and political issues going on in the world, and as a way to allow the students to autonomize their emotional feelings and directly channel it into changing the world and therefore being a leader of tomorrow. With me, Fela Lufideju, actor, mentor at the helm of it all. And today, I have with me year 11 student slash former student of City Academy, Brianna Prince. Hey, Brianna, what's good? I'm good, how are you? <laughs> I'm very well, thank you. Nice to see you. And you, it's been a while. Yeah, yeah it has, it has indeed. And now we can see each other in face to face rather than on Zoom as we have done over the last year. How have you been? I've been good, I yeah. think. Just settling into everything that's been happening. I know it's been a year since the COVID pandemic started, but yeah. it's been, been madness. Yes, I know that you are a particularly caring person. Um, you, we spoke a lot about like helping others. We spoke a lot about music therapy. You know, those were things that, you know, you, you seemed to have such a, a warm and caring heart about you that you wanted to kind of open up and give to other people. That how has navigating COVID and the social and lockdown, how has that affected you and your family? Yeah, it's been a bit of a struggle because um, obviously I used to see my family virtually every day, but yeah. I only live with my mother. So when the pandemic happened, we knew that we weren't going to be able to see each other that much. And at the beginning, it was a lot more of a struggle than I realised it would be. But yeah. as time progressed and we realised we could just like, are thankful to have the technology that we have and it was able to still communicate with them. Yeah, it yeah. was a lot better than I thought it would be. Yeah, because you have a big wider extended family, right? And uh, the immediate family is quite close knit. Yeah. So not being able to, how was the birthday? and the family, you know, the family yeah, celebration it was, it was a weird experience because like um, for every cele birthday celebration we used to have, it would be everyone was together yeah. just celebrating, but it resulted in like um, Zoom calls where you'd have like someone stringing up decorations <laughs> in the back and we'd be doing like oh. games with each other on Zoom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But All the inno uh, innovative ideas as yeah. to how you can still engage one another and be present with one another. Yeah, I think in a way it was fun to see what type of ideas people would come up with and how yeah. we adapted to it because yeah, yeah. no one would have expected this to happen. Yeah, you your imagination in the best way possible, right? So we're here, core lot, you know? Um, and I started working with you. Well, I know initially, because City Academy, you know, we couldn't get in there because um, of COVID issues or whatever. Um, but I started working with you back in September. Uh, so how did you come about being involved in core lot? So I was selected, we were told about the, um the opportunity to do it when we actually started when we were on teams mm -hmm. um, having lessons and so we had an assembly with our head of year and he told us about the opportunity and as soon as we got off the call for our lesson all of our friends texted in a group chat we were like we have to reply we yeah, have to do yeah. this so we all applied for the position and then we were told who made it in yeah and what particularly like, drove you to apply and what was your application was it because of the social issues or the fact that you wanted to like, you know, leader of tomorrow is such a broad term. And I know that together you and I created this very, the leader within, which is kind of what we have titled everything as, you know, your directional leader. Because for me, being a leader of tomorrow is my um, image of what a leader of tomorrow is. And for you, it's your image. So how, what was your uh, impetus to join? I think it was for me, um, given the opportunity to like talk about whatever we wanted to talk about, mm -hmm. or it wasn't, there wasn't that much idea of you have to do this or you have to do that. Mm -hmm. We were given like space to talk freely about what we wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. And it was like, we were finally given the place to just be who we wanted to be because mm -hmm. being in year 11, we thought we would have a lot more opportunities than we did. And being given this opportunity, it was amazing because like doing the TED talk today, I get to speak about what I want to talk about mm -hmm. and how I want to speak about it. So yes, it yes, you say TED talk, well, I will label it as core trust talks. <laughs> I can see that you're head girl there. So how did you, like Brianna's head girl. <laughs> so how did you come about like 
be in Head Girl? How, what was the process? So um, we were told about it towards the start of the year, and we had given, we'd been given um, a like application that you had to sign up for, and mm -hmm. it had so you just started off with your name, your year group, your form, and then we had about five different paragraphs that you had to write about why you would be selected for the opportunity, what you would do, and things like that. And I've wanted to do it since I was in year seven, so mm -hmm. um, it wasn't too hard for me to form it the paragraphs. But I really like um, had to talk to my I talked to my uncle as well because yeah. he was a head boy in his school. And ah. we actually like just sat down for a while and talked about like really getting into why I want to do this and am I going to make correct decisions? Am I like the right person for people to come and talk to yeah, and yeah. things like that? And do you like what? Obviously, you think that you are the right kind of person because I know you to be a very caring person, a, a person that kind of spearheads people, you know, in the in a direction that you're like you've. There's a leader energy about you that's undoubtable. So, what are the qualities that you think you possess that made like o over all of the other application made you the the right person to be head I girl? think um, the most obvious one would be leadership skills because over the years we've had not um, head girls in other like year groups like year eight and year nine, but we've had like student council teams and I've always mm -hmm. tried to participate in those and also sports teams as well, like participate in those. I think I've been able to develop like being just even simply talking to someone and just asking them like are you all right because yeah. there was a lot of problems in year 11 when it came to actually doing our exams mm -hmm. because as we know we couldn't all do them in halls together exactly and because it was just with the actual teacher um a lot of people just wouldn't show up to lesson yeah, yeah. and i think with the friendships i have with people across the year, i was easily able to go up and be like just stop messing around just yeah, just go yeah. to the lesson do the exam yeah. and i don't think i would have been able to do that if it wasn't for all the relationships i'd form yeah. and like having that confidence to talk to people because yeah. with the merge and having a whole other school of people I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know whether I'd be able to talk to them or not, but yeah, yeah it was but good. But Bri Brian, that's, like I must say, like working with you over the last year, there is a community kind of energy that you have about you. Like you've always spearheaded people to come together, you know, and you have this care for other people. And I, I want to say in this moment, you know, like that's a beautiful, wonderful quality that you have about yourself. You've always been so, open and expressing how you feel about th things, but, but with, a, with a positive kind of aspect for change in society, whether it be, you know, with in medicine or music therapy. I also know that you, you love uh, playing the piano, for instance. I, I discovered this in uh, one of the first ever things that you wrote for me, um, where you, because obviously we spoke with the idea of having this dialogue with yourself on, pa on the paper to be able to kind of talk through your emotions and express your emotions on page and I discovered that you like play so talk to us more about like your love of music yeah so I'm not really sure where it started because I did play the flute in year six but that just went straight out of the window <laughs> and I think when I got into year seven because we used to have regular music lessons and we had a piano there yeah. obviously we played it for the lessons but then as soon as I got out in school and would talk to my mum and be like I want to take piano lessons as well then it developed into something more yeah 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 oh nice to enjoy it. so how what, what like, are you doing grades or are you just so kind I start of like doing a the lesson now because I realized I wanted to start teaching myself how to play nice. and so I've been carrying that on since year eight and I yeah. find it um, I probably prefer it to actually having lessons because going through the struggle of being like when you realize you can't play something right and then just like trying to give up but then realizing no let's not give up mm -hmm. try again the next day just keep keep trying yeah, and yeah. then yeah so the tenacity yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, and now you've got a speech with the speech that you prepared for us. Yeah. So let's let's hear it. Thank you. Medicine and drugs. Two words that I'm sure everyone here either has positive or negative connotations to. But either way, I think we can all agree that medicine is something we all rely on day by day. Whether it's something as simple as just using some ibuprofen to cure a headache or even paracetamol or being prescribed medication from your doctor to help treat your symptoms. We easily put our full trust into these things daily, just assuming that our doctors know what is being put into the drug they prescribe to us. However, this isn't always the case. Medicine is a field which requires lifelong learning due to the fact that what we accept as scientific today will be disregarded by the doctors of tomorrow due to due discovery of new cutting edge research. And so, it's because of this that a rigorous drug discovery and development process is used in the pharmaceutical industry to ensure that the drugs provided and approved for patients are safe and effective. However, the problem is that full transparency and scepticism in research is required as if ethics are not held to a high standard, it can lead to many tragedies. One example being the thalidomide scandal. This is where a drug developed in the 1950s used for simple flus, colds and morning sickness in pregnant women had to be taken off the market as it led to thousands of deaths and birth defects worldwide. 
And this was all due to insufficient drug regulation. This drug, however, was not approved by the FDA in the US as it lacked sufficient evidence of safety through clinical trials. And it is this smart decision which wisely prevented the usage of an unsafe drug in the US. It's decisions like these which can prevent unsafe drugs being put out into the market for use by people like us. And so the question is, why are more pharmaceutical companies not releasing data from clinical trials on the effectiveness of their drugs? Or even, why are they suppressing results by only releasing positive data and withholding the negatives? If having transparent results would ensure that decisions made relate to the safety of the drugs as supported by the best available scientific evidence, why is there still debate on this? Well, actually, the common argument is, there's no answer to what must be disclosed. People have said that there are many different regulations and policies that have different requirements of what should be disclosed, and so this can lead to complications. But realistically, I think things are being made more complicated than they need to be. Because when you think about it, somewhere along the line, we have lost focus of what science is, and instead, we have focused on what sells. But starting as soon as possible, all clinical trials taking place on both animals and humans should be published, whether the results are positive or negative. Because in order to ensure safety in what we are using, we shouldn't be losing sight of the end goal by arguing about what degree of scepticism should be used, but rather ensuring information put out ensures the drug use is as safe as possible before it is too late. Go on, Brianna. Nailed it. Well done. Wow. Thank you. You did it. That was a very impactful speech. Thank you in a very succinct, direct and concise. So how did you come about um, creating that? So I think it was mainly to do with when we had our speeches before and we uh -huh. were talking about like our interests and I talked about how I liked music therapy. Yes. Um, wanting to like volunteer in a care home for work experience was something that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And music therapy, music therapy was something that a lot of them provided. So I was thinking about how I could actually do that. But then when I started to research more into music therapy, I realized that I actually liked the science behind it yeah. and what was going on. And so when I started reading loads of articles, I found out about a book mm -hmm. um, called Bad Pharma. And so I read into that, and that's why I decided to base my speech for that, because I thought it was important to talk about what was going on there. Because, you know, Big Pharma, as it is, is known for medicating the symptom rather than curing the cause. And that's uh, because it sells to kind of carry on medicating the symptom and not necessarily address the cause of things. Which is well, it's wonderful to hear you talk about that. I know that we actually got you on, online with somebody that was that does a music therapy. Yeah. How was that experience? Yeah, it was good because that's not something I would like ever be able to do if it yeah. wasn't for this opportunity. And it was insightful to hear about like his just day to day job and like what he went through, especially with the pandemic and yeah. how things have changed. It was just interesting to hear. Yeah, I mean, pandemic permitting or whatever, um, if the pandemic wasn't here, we would have had him here in person and have you, have you discuss properly and uh, maybe shadow him or, or see what it was like to actually live in a day or uh, in the life of somebody doing music therapy. But, you know, we have COVID. <laughs> so what does the future look like for you? Where are you going? I know that you've just left yeah, City Academy, so, so you're on to the next chapter. Yeah, I'm going on to six, so I'm hopefully going to King Edwards. So, King Edwards. Yeah, and then thanks to this, I realised that I wanted to do an um, extended project qualification, and I think I would base it off of what I did my speech here today. Nice. And I think because of this opportunity, it's even better for me so that when I apply to um, universities, I can show that I actually had interest from when I was in year 11, yes. and then link my extended project qualification to wow. this. Look at that, look at that, foresight. You already have the intention set and you're moving towards it. Um, you're very, very, what's the word? You have direction about you and that's really inspiring to watch. So how old are you? 16. 16, at the age of 16, you have such tenacity and direction about you and that's something you should never lose. Um, that speech was wonderful and we can only thank you for sharing the, a, a little insight into the workings of your mind. Um, how? If you it can encapsulate um, how this process of Leaders of Tomorrow has been for you over the last year, uh, tell us about that. I think I'll just say I'm very grateful for it because it was not just a way to talk about a subject that I wanted to talk about, but it was also just to allow all the emotions that are built up over the time thanks mm. to the pandemic and just talk to someone who just wasn't like a teacher, but yeah. who can understand what we're feeling and yeah. like give us the guidance and things like that. Oh, thank you. You're gassing me up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brianna. Like, it's wonderful. It's been wonderful to see you progress 
over the last year um, in what you, with the interactions, you know, we, um, with City particularly, with the year 11s, with the exams that were going on, trying to negotiate all of that. It's been really wonderful to see you individually with the things that you're passionate about and also those group settings and those group discussions that we had and um, that went on for hours in which we were just chatting at one another. Um, it's really wonderful to see you there spearheading that, contributing to that. And I hope you carry on with that in the future because your, your future looks incredibly bright. Thank you. <laughs> As you can see, Brianna clearly has an incredible future ahead of her. Um, and we thank her for sharing some insight into her, her mind and the things that she's passionate about. Brianna is part of a greater project that involves other students sharing what they are passionate about and showing us what the leader of tomorrow looks like to them. So be sure to check them out. Thank you.